Hello, and welcome to episode number 40 of the Draw Up Creations podcast. Um, I am now referring to this as the Draw Up Creations Crochet and Cross Stitch, um, because those are the two things that we'll be talking mainly about. So, I do apologize ahead of time if I seem a little distant. <laughs> I am really not feeling well. Um, I believe I am beginning to get the flu that everybody sort of shared around uh, in my neighborhood anyway and in my family over the Christmas holidays. And to this point, I was flu free. I, I was amazed. And I woke up this morning at about four o'clock in the morning and realized that mm, I think it's here. So um, if I look a little peaked, if I feel, sound a little off, if my words get more tongue-tied than normal, I'm blaming it on the flu. Well, and also the 4 a.m. wake up, which was not appreciated either. But I'm here. I promised that I would be doing more of the uh, weekly, trying to do weekly podcasts, and here I am. So yay for me. Um, I was going to postpone till tomorrow, hoping to feel better, and then I thought, well, what if I feel worse? So this is just sort of the, the day one of the flu, and I am sure it is going to get worse before it gets better, because that's normally what happens. All right, well, you are not here to hear about my health updates. You are here to hear about the crochet and the cross stitch. So let's get right into it. All right, I have piles of things all over the place, as I'm sure you can see in the periphery, um, but we will get through this. So first off, um, I'd like to thank everybody who uh, took the time to watch uh, episode number 39. Thank you so much. I know I was gone for a really long time, and it's rather heartwarming to be welcomed back. So thank you very, very much. Um, one of the things that became apparent through the comments, and I do read every comment, I try and respond to everybody. Um, now, I will preface that with saying that I try and comment on every comment of the, the video that I just released. So, for example, this video is going to release today. It is, um, what is it? It is January the 6th. Um, the only calendar I have is a 2019 December calendar on the wall. So I really need to get a new calendar so I can look over and know what day it is. But anyway, today is January the 6th. Um, and I will, of course, be on the lookout for for comments that happen on this video. I don't always get notification of comments that have happened on older videos, so if you comment on older videos and I don't respond, please forgive me. I don't know you've been there. Um, but I will always try and comment on the most current uh, current uh, videos, uh, especially with the giveaways and whatnot that I do. All right, so one of the things that people were asking for was more information um, in general on um, craft fairs, on craft shows, on how to prep, on what to do, on my strategies. And I am super willing to share that with you guys. So throughout this year, um, as I, you know, decide what my products are going to be and as I begin the, the making process and I sort of get some business plans in, in place, I will share that all with you. Um, even this summer, um, once the snow's gone, because there's like a foot of it out there, but once the snow's gone and it's summertime, even to do a mock market set up in the backyard with some tables, uh, I'll, I'll see if I can get that arranged. So I, I plan to share a lot with you about the markets. But one of the things that was specifically asked for was a rundown of what sold the best through the markets. So I went through my records. Now, that's one thing I do do at my markets is I write down everything that sells and I keep careful track of it um, in order to plan for next year's inventory. So of the five markets that I did, um, I'm just including the fall and winter markets. And there were only five of them. So I don't do a ton of markets. Um, I hopefully will do about six this year, so I'm gradually increasing the number of markets I do. But I did sort of go through and figure out what I sold. So, all in all, I sold 23 amigurumis. Now, those prices ranged from $2 for finger puppets all the way up to $50 for bigger items, but there were 23 amigurumi pieces that sold in total. 17 of the cup cozies, um, the ones that go on to the to-go cups um, to protect your hands. 
12 novelty hats. Now I consider novelty hats anything that's sort of thematic. So pumpkin hats, um, the Viking hats that I did uh, at Christmas, I did a couple of stocking caps, that sort of things. Things that you wouldn't necessarily wear day to day. Some people do, but not many. More of a novelty. I know the Viking hats, the, the uh, man size and the lady size, both went to the same family and they were using them for Halloween decoration or for Halloween costuming. So that sort of thing. So novelty hats, 12 novelty hats, 10 of my dishcloths, one wreath, 12 of the bandana scarves that I make with um, Karen Latte cakes. I could not keep those in stock. I could not crochet them up fast enough between markets. A little bit of learning. Um, five cowls, three basic beanies, five textured beanies, 13 pairs of fingerless gloves, two messy bun hats, 28 scrunchies. I do not make my scrunchies out of the... Um, the velvet yarns I just use, actually I was using Karen Pantone yarns um, because of the color palettes and they sold like hotcakes, perhaps because the, the I was able to price them or I did price them um, for, I wouldn't say significantly less, but about it was about a dollar less than anybody else I saw who did the velvet ones. So, and people were buying like one velvet one and then coming over and buying two or three of the others. Um, and then I sold six headbands. So all in all of, of those bigger, I, I sold 137 items throughout those uh, five markets. Each market seemed to get progressively a little bit better as I fine-tuned. Um, as I said, I will take you along as I prep for 2020. Um, I will share with you some of my business strategies and let you know if they work or if they don't. Because you know what? It's not about competition. It's about raising each other up. And if I can give you a hint to help you in your markets, maybe you're just starting out. If I can help you to not make some of the mistakes I did um, or to, you know, use my experience as as a trial ground a little bit for you, so be it. I'm more than willing to share my, my, my experiences with you to ensure that you have the best possible markets as well. Alrighty, so I am going to move right into crochet. So I have begun my market prep. Yes, you heard that correctly. It is the first week of January and I'm preparing for next fall's markets. This was a learning experience for me um, and I will never be behind the eight ball again. Um, I, I'm, I'm determined to have a good strategy for my my uh, product and how much product I have well before the markets hit. So the first thing I figured I would do um, in, in crochet was to uh, replace some of the uh, dishcloths that I sold. So as I said, I sold 10 of those in total throughout the markets. So I have started to replace them. Um, so I have a lot of um, cotton, cotton yarn um, in, you know, little bit quantities here and there. So I'm really stash busting right now, going through my stash and just trying to use up what I've got. Um, the dishcloths were something that weren't necessarily as color coordinated as the rest of my inventory. As I get through the cotton that I've got, it will become very color coordinated like the rest of my inventory. I think I'm going to stick with a lot of really neutral colors for my um, dishcloths because those seem to be what people were most attracted to. Um, but this is what I've done up so far. So I've got a blue one here and a waffle stitch. Um, and the rest of them are all the same stitch. And I really, really enjoy this stitch for my personal um, uh, dishcloths and washcloths. So I figured I'd go with that stitch for um, my inventory as well. So there's one. I'll just briefly show them all to you. They're all the same stitch. It's just a single crochet in the back loop only. So it creates that ribbing, which is a really nice texture for the dishcloths. This one pooled really nicely. I really do like these colors. The, um, the back loop uh, ribbing really does do neat things to uh, the colors. Um, a bright peach one. And then a 
pink into browns. And then another, this is, I believe, Mushroom Twist by um, Handicraft or Cotton. So all of these are either Handicraft or Cotton, or I had some leftover bits and pieces of cotton cakes. I used them first myself to make sure that they were, that they would react in water the same way that I wanted them to and they actually do quite well so if you've got leftover um, cotton cakes you can definitely use them as dishcloths and they work quite well. So presentation wise for markets this is how I package up my dishcloths. Um, the pricing on them this past year and I think I will leave it at this price for next for this coming market. Um, I charge five dollars each or three for twelve. Um, yeah, it's not something that I sell a ton of, but I usually sell at least three every market. And they were actually very popular at um, my very last Christmas market as stocking stuffers. So yeah, I take them along to every market, package them up. This is just um, scrapbooking paper. I used to be an avid scrapbooker. I know I've mentioned it before. So I just make up all my tags using, um, and all my, uh, well, not all. A lot of my packaging I make using my leftover scrapbook paper from years gone by. Uh, I might as well use it up so it doesn't cost me anything additional. Um, on the front it just says mom's favorite dishcloths, 100% cotton, um, and then the pricing. Now of course with the, uh, the cotton cakes cloths that I've made, I will have to change that 100% cotton because they're not. They're a cotton acrylic blend. All right, so that's what I've done so far this week um, for my uh, inventory stock up. And I sold 10 dishcloths. I still had a handful left. I will be happy when I've got 15 new dishcloths made to go into inventory. So I've got, what, three, six, seven. Um, so I'm about halfway there. Another week or so of making a dishcloth in the mornings as I'm watching YouTube and eating my breakfast. Um, and I should have enough dishcloths to go into next season's markets. So the other thing I have been working on in crochet is a, a wrap that I am going to be using again at markets um, for, yeah, again for markets. So this is, it's going to be a buffalo check gingham, as you can see. Um, I have not weaved in any ends. This is very much a work in progress. Um, it is done with a griddle stitch, I believe it's called. Um, well, it's called so many things. All the different stitches in crochet seem to have a hundred different names. Um, this is the one where you're going along and you're doing a single crochet and then a double crochet and a single crochet and a double crochet. And on the return, you flip it around so you're working on the opposite side and you're, if in the double crochet you do a single, in the single you do a double. So everybody knows that stitch pattern. I'm using three different colors. I'm using black, burgundy, and a bright red. So these are the three colors and they are all impeccable yarns. I really like working with impeccable yarns. They're not the world's softest yarns, but they do hold up to washing and drying really nicely. Um, so this is going to be one of the themes at this year's markets. So here you go, you're starting to see it already, is I have determined that I am going to be using um, sort of the, the blacks and the grays, and then red as an accent color. Um, there's going to be a lot of the ginghams and buffalo checks. There's going to be a, a, a real lean towards, um, you know, the work socks, the gray, uh, sort of off white and red combination that you can get men's work socks in. I'll be doing a lot of things in that kind of a combination and very much a theme of, you know, the, the cabin, the cabin at, at Christmas is going to be my theme going into this fall and winter's markets. And this is the beginning of it. So as I said, this is going to end up growing into a wrap. This is the width of the wrap. So it's going to, it's like a really wide scarf. Um, and it'll probably be about, I don't know, this is probably a, coming up onto two feet now. It'll probably be about six feet in length. So they're going to be really, really big. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to be charging for them because I'm not sure how much materials I'm going to use. This, oh no, sorry, I banged the table and you probably blew your eardrums out. I apologize. Um, 
but yes, because I haven't got my materials down, I'm not following a pattern with this. I'm just sort of developing it as I go. Um, the gingham or the, the buffalo check, the plaid patterning is out there in a bazillion different videos, a bazillion different tutorials if you're interested in learning how to do it. Um, it's very much a tapestry crochet where you're carrying colors in behind. Now, I have seen tutorials where they tell you that, you know, oh, don't bother um, fastening off. You can just uh, uh, allow your, your um, yarn to travel up the side because you're not going that far. So, like, this red would only have to travel, you know, two lines before you use this burgundy again. But I think that looks messy. Um, I would rather weave in the ends, all those ends. I know there's a million of them, but I would rather weave them in and have it a nice finished. Um, I'm sure I will be doing a border on it. Um, I just don't want to have those ends traveling. Um, I, I found it looked really messy. So that is that. So I will be sharing the progress on that and letting you see it as it develops. My next one that I've already got planned um, will be a off-white, um, a light gray, and a dark gray. So different shades of gray will be the three colors that I use for that one. I'll probably have three different color combinations in total um, of these wraps. I plan to um, display them. I'll have one open for people to test, and then the rest will be folded in half like this and then rolled up and potentially tied with a ribbon so that it's already packaged up and ready to go. And I think that's going to be a beautiful, beautiful display. Uh, more on that as it develops. So those are sort of the two projects I've been working on in crochet. Um, of course, last week we talked about the Nanton cowl, which I am wearing right now. Um, the Nanton cowl right now is out with some testers. Um, I do plan to release that um, mid-January. So right now I just want to do a big, a big thank you and a big public recognition for my testers. Thank you to Kayla, Crystal, Rosie, and Elisa for offering to test the cowl. I appreciate all of your feedback um, and making, making it a lot easier for me to develop these patterns. Thank you ladies so much. It is so appreciated. All right, so that is the crochet content for today other than the giveaways at the end of the video. Um, so you'll notice that I'm not listing the words giveaway in the descriptions of the videos because I really want these giveaways to be for people who are watching the videos. Um, and I'll always be doing them at the end of the video. So I've got um, some giveaways from last week to uh, announce and some new giveaways for this week. So stick in there. Even if you're not totally into, cro into cross stitch, stick with me until the end and uh, find out about those giveaways. Alrighty, so on to some cross stitch. All right, cross stitch time. So as you uh, may be aware, if you have been with me for a while, oh, you know what? Let me share my cup with you. This is my Harry Potter uh, Marauder's Map uh, cup. It is an insulated cup, um, so it keeps my coffee or tea fairly warm. I am drinking coffee today with a shot of dairy-free eggnog. Um, yes, I am still indulging in my eggnog. Um, I found some really good dairy-free alternatives to eggnog this year. This one is a coconut uh, base, and it is really, really good. Um, yeah, it's great for to use as a creamer in your coffee. And you know what? It's not bad on its own with some ice and a shot of rum in it as well. Um, there's your public service announcement for the day. Um, <laughs> I, I got this mug um, in a yarny swap with Kayla from Kayla Loves Crochet. Thank you, Kayla. It gets good use. Um, all right, so moving into cross stitch. So I have been busy, busy, busy with my cross stitch. Um, I did not have a project for New Year's Eve that I could take along with me. We went for New Year's Eve to my sister's house and it was amazing. Um, it is the first time in, oh, probably about 10 years that I have not hosted New Year's Eve at my house. This year, I hosted Christmas Day, which was something very different for me, um, being unemployed at the moment. 
means that uh, I wasn't working crazy hours in retail through the Christmas season and I was able to enjoy it just a little bit more than I have in the in the past little while. Um, but yes, so I went to my sister's house for New Year's Eve and I really didn't have a crochet project that was portable. Um, the gingham or buffalo check wrap is a great project to work on. Um, it's fairly mindless once you get the, the, the rhythm of it. Um, it's, it's not a tough thing to do, but you're dealing with multiple balls at the same time and tangling does ensue unless you can be really careful. So I didn't want to be taking that along and trying to wrangle my yarn balls while celebrating New Year's with my family. So instead I brought along one of my cross stitches, um, Beggar's Christmas. Oh, and you know what? I did not pull down the pattern. Give me one moment. I apologize. There it is. All right, I'm back. Um, so I brought along Beggar's Christmas and I finished it. You heard that correctly. I finished it. So I actually put this week 1,146 stitches into Beggar's Christmas. Yeah, it was a lot of stitching, um, but I really wanted to get it finished. There's a couple of, of very Christmas-centric um, pieces that are that I'm in the process of making right now that I'd like to get off and get done so that I can move into some less Christmassy things and some designing and whatnot. Although I will probably always have something uh, Christmas being stitched throughout the year. Um, especially the bigger pieces because they take so much longer to do. But, you know, with no further ado, let me show you Beggar's Christmas. So this was the pattern. Again, I did share a little bit about this last week. Oh, it's probably got some glare going on. I'm going to crinkle. I apologize, but I want to take this cover page out so you can actually see it. Sans the glare. Oh my goodness, this whole new skill set trying to share cross-stitch on, on YouTube. All right, so... Threadworks Primitive is Primitives is the designer. Um, Beggar's Christmas is the design. So it's an original design by Nan Lewis. It is, um, I did not do it on the suggested fabric or use the suggested floss because I was, you know, being me. Can never do what's suggested. So um, here is my finished piece. Da, 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 da. And I am super, super happy with how this turned out. Um, so this is done on an 18 count Ada. Um, so it's a, it's a fairly small count for an Ada cloth. Um, the colors that I chose are all just DMC colors. The, uh, 310, which is black, uh, for the crow is the only color that was the color called for. Um, the other colors and in, in the, the floss that was called for was actually variegated flosses. Um, and I chose to just go with flat flosses, but I really like how these colors have worked together. Now, I will likely not be doing a full finish on this until closer to Christmas. But there it is. Beggar's Christmas complete. Hooray! I have my first cross-stitch finish of the year. So what else have I been working on? Um, well, uh, I have been working on a, uh, a design called Noel. This is out of the magazine. Oh, I don't know if I can even find the front of the magazine. This is a really old magazine. It is from Stitcher's World, November 2001. Um, I was an avid cross-stitcher back in the late 90s, uh, early 2000s, um, when my boys were significantly younger than they are now. Then again, so was I. Um, <laughs> but... I bought up a bunch of magazines then, and because I never throw things away that have to do with crafting, and thank goodness I didn't, because now I'm going to, now I'm able to revisit some of these older magazines and find really, really nice patterns, nice designs that aren't terribly common right now. So this is Noel, and it is um, by designer uh, Candace Thomas. Now, a lot of these designers, I don't know if they're even active anymore um, because this is such an old pattern. But I nearly complete this one. I did put 494 stitches into Noel this week. And oops, I guess I should do this still. This is where I'm at. So Noel is being worked on a, I believe this is a 14 count um, eight o'clock in just an oatmeal color. Again, the colors, I, ch I got my inspiration from the colors in the 
the uh, pattern, but they are my own. Um, it also did call for a Krynik, uh, for those of you who are the crocheters who are just uh, learning a little bit about cross stitch. The Krynik is uh, a metallic thread and I did not use any metallic thread in this. I'm just using the normal DMC threads, but I'm really pleased with how this is turning out. And as I went through some of the older magazines, I did find a couple of patterns, a couple of designs that have this same feel to them. They're not exactly the same. One says faith. Um, they're not all exactly the same, but they have this feel to them, this very, um, I don't know, I don't even know how to describe it, but it is really speaking to me. I like the symmetry of it. I like the, uh, the repetitiveness of the border. I just think this is really beautiful and really classic and almost done. So I do believe that this will probably be my next finished piece. So that is Noel. And finally, I have put 432 stitches into the crow. So this is the cover of the, um, the crow pattern. The crow pattern is a uh, chart that I got from um, an Etsy store called uh, Stony Knob Farm. I will link everything below in the description box like I always do. Now this is a full coverage piece. What kind of makes me smile about this was this was the piece that actually really inspired me to start cross stitching again. I know, full coverage, what was I thinking? Um, <laughs> but it's a stretch um, and it's a challenge and it'll take me a really long time. It's really not that big of a piece for a, a, um, a full coverage. It's only 224 by 168 um, stitches only, um, but it is complete full coverage. So let me show you where I've gotten to right now. It's not going to look like much, um, but this is where I'm at. I do have this in a Q-snap, and my lovely enabling husband did get me for Christmas a, um, a stand for the table that I can hook the Q-snap into and work on it that way, because it is a little awkward to juggle a Q-snap for me. But there we are. So this is the top corner um, and I am working that way. Um, the darker colors, there's quite a bit of, I wouldn't call it true confetti. It's not necessarily too many single stitches, but you know, no more than four or five stitches of the same color together, which is a little challenging for me. Um, this middle part, though, I'm able to pick up um, quite a few uh, good stitch runs um, for my uh, assignments in the School of Magical Stitches. But yeah, there is where we're at so far. I expect this to be something that I'm working on throughout the year, but not something that I'm necessarily going to complete this year. I'd love to, but I'm trying to be realistic. All right, so those are the three cross stitch pieces that I've worked on this week. Um, I've also been working on my own cross stitch design, which I plan to release at the beginning of February, and it will be a Valentine's Day uh, offering. It is almost completely designed. I'm just tweaking it now and I'm going to be starting to uh, stitch the sample, um, sample stitch. I can show you a couple of things. I'm not going to show you the pattern. Um, that's going to be a surprise, but I will show you the three colors. It is a three color pattern, so it doesn't have a lot of colors in it, but I am charting it in um, eight, DMC Flosses 814, which is Garnet Dark. Uh, 316, which is Antique Mauve Medium, and 3799, which is Pewter Gray, Very Dark. So those are the three colors that I will be using um, to chart up, or to stitch up my design. This is what they are charted in. And I am going to be uh, stitching that on a uh, 18 count uh, vintage mocha Vintage Country Mocha, I believe it's called, um, fabric. It is an Ada, it is hand dyed, so it's got a little bit of variation in it. It's actually the leftover fabric from my Beggar's Christmas. So this is what I'm going to be stitching um, my model stitch on and finishing that for the pattern. So I'm going to have to be working on that quite a bit this next week so that it's done in time, completely fully finished, photographed, everything ready to go for the beginning of February. So I, I really like these colors together um, rather than it being, you know, the tradition, 
traditional red and pink and black. I sort of went with things that were a little more vintagey, a little more... I don't even know if vintage is the word I'm looking for. Probably. They're muted colors. I'm really still into the muted colors. Um, I know before I took my little break, I was talking about the muted colors in the self and in the hand dyed yarn. And that is definitely translating into the cross stitch um, world as well. So there are the colors and my plans for my Valentine's piece in cross stitch. Alrighty, so I can talk to you just a wee bit about uh, my shop update and then we will get into giveaways. Okie dokie, some shop updates. I don't really have anything to show you. <laughs> so as you know, if you watched last week's video, um, I was running a sale in my shop. Um, it ended, uh, it actually, I believe it ends today. So uh, yeah, it ended, it's ending as of the 6th. Um, and I have made a couple of sales of bags um, from that sale, thank goodness, uh, cleaning out some room, because this Friday I expect to be putting up some new project bags. So if you're interested, come take a look. Um, there will definitely be, blah, blah, blah. oh my goodness, there will definitely be some uh, crochet slash knitting project bags going up. Um, As for my uh, cross stitch project bags, I am working on my design. Um, hopefully there will, they will be ready and there will be a couple to go up um, this Friday. If not, watch for those next Friday. All right, that's all I've got to talk to you about, uh, about my shop update. Oh yeah, the Nanton Cowl releasing on January 15th and the Valentine's cross stitch will release hopefully February 1st, if not a little bit sooner. Um, I will keep you uh, informed on those release dates as we draw a little bit closer. So what you're all truly here for, the giveaways. So if you watched last week's video, <laughs> you will have seen my oops moment where I just, you know, held up those cross stitch charts for everybody to see. And then my husband had to, you know, my enabling husband, um, worked really hard to figure out how to blur them out. So um, this week I will not be holding up the charts that way. Um, I will be holding them the other way, which means that the, the what you're going to see is probably a very small, if you're going to be able to see them at all. Um, I hope you will. If not, I will include some pictures, but we will see how things go. So the first chart from last week was the... Oh, you know what? Let's start with crochet. Let's start with the crochet hooks, if only because that's how I've got them written down. So every week I am going to try and give away something crochet related and something cross stitch related because this podcast is inclusive of both crafts. So from a crochet perspective, I have these chunky glitter hooks, um, a 15 millimeter, a 12 millimeter and a 10 millimeter. They're kind of fun and shiny. They are plastic hooks. There were, let me see, 10 people um, said that they would be interested in the hooks. And Judy Mills is the winner. Judy Mills, those are for you. If you can please contact me, my email address is below. Contact me via email with your mailing address so I can get those out to you. Congratulations, Judy. So the next thing I had to give away was the wizard pattern. This is the little tiny picture that I can show you of the wizard. I can't show you the other side because that's the chart. Um, it is charted in DMC, Anchor, and Madeira. I believe that's a floss co more common in the UK, and which would make sense because these came out of a UK magazine. Um, so the wizard, he is really cute. He's wearing purple, has stars on his outfit, is reading a book because these are all charted to be bookmarks. So the wizard, there were seven people who identified that they'd be interested in the wizard bookmark chart. And that goes to Ms. Cleo 08, M-S-C-L-I-O 08. So Ms. Cleo, Ms. Cleo 08, um, if again, if you can contact me down below um, in my email, uh, I'll list it down there. It is, it's derobcreations at shaw.ca, but I will list it down there. Um, contact me with your mailing address and I will pop that in the mail for you. Congratulations, Ms. Cleo. Hope I'm saying that right. And finally, we have the little fairy. Again, she's really cute. She's got beautiful red hair. She, well, 
I'm pink, but we'll call it red. Um, she's got cute little wings. She's reading a book because it's a bookmark. And she has the most beautiful green and pink striped tights I have ever seen. Um, so the fairy, there were only four people who wanted the fairy uh, bookmark chart. And that is, goes to Angela Bolbeck. Angela Bolbeck, congratulations. You have won the fairy chart. Please, please, please. Uh, give me a, an email, send me your snail mail address where I can post this off to you and I'll get it out into the mail as quickly as possible. So again, congratulations, Judy, Ms. Cleo and Angela. Contact me and we'll get those in the mail. So this week's giveaways, what is there? Well, let's start with crochet. So from a crochet perspective, you can tell what I'm doing right now, right? I'm, I'm sort of new year, cleaning out things, getting rid of some excess, right? Um, people are all talking about um, working from their stash. And for me, um, I'm a collector of things. Um, a lot of the magazines that I was purchasing came with these free gifts um, that I'm not using. So rather than having them sitting in a box collecting dust, I'm giving them away. Um, hoping to find homes for them where they will actually be used. So this is the crochet giveaway this week. What is it, you may ask? Well, let me tell you. It is a hook gauge. So around the outside of this wooden uh, block, first of all, there is the cutest little sheep on there, but along the outside are little slots with different sizes on them. So 2, 2.5, 3, 3.25, 3.5, 3.75, and yada, 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 all the way up to a size 10 hook. If you have a mystery hook, you're not quite sure what size the hook is, you can slide the neck of the hook into these little holes, and the one it fits uh, the most um, precisely in is your hook size. So these are great to have, especially if you've got some um, crochet hooks. I know I have a, a load of them that have the um, rubberized handles on them. And eventually, for some of them anyway, the size wears off. Um, so if you forget what color is what size, or if you get a different set and the colors aren't the same as your previous set, you're hooped, right? Not anymore. So please, in your comments, do not mention the word giveaway. Um, we want to keep the bots away. Um, if you mention the word giveaway, I'm going to delete your comment because I don't want to get flooded with bots and with people who aren't watching the, the videos. These giveaways are for my viewers. Um, so if you would like um, to uh, win the, uh, the gauge swatch or the, the hook gauge, please, in your comment, uh, just use the word gauge. Um, use it in whatever you, in way you want in your comment. Just make sure it includes the word gauge. That's the word I'll be looking for to pull out the names for the uh, random, the, the comment picker. I guess it's not random. It's a comment picker based on a filter. So that is the crochet giveaway for the week. And again, I have two more of the bookmark charts that I am not going to hold the wrong way. Um, the first one is a pirate. He has a peg leg because he is a pirate. Um, he is holding a map. Um, he is a purpley, purpley dressed pirate, um, but he is really cute. He's got a full beard. He's got an eye patch. So a very classic uh, children's pirate character. If you would like to win this chart, please, um, in the comments, just write, um, I'd like to stitch the pirate. And finally, the last giveaway for the week is another bookmark chart. This one is a child. It could be either a girl or a boy. Now this one is charted in sort of a bluish purple for the pants in a yellow with a blue or with that bluish purple stripe in the shirt. You could of course change that up to be any color you wanted. So if you wanted this uh, the child to look more girl-like, you could girly up the colors you could put, you know, if you were going to ch um, stitch this up as a gift for a young reader in your life, you could really personalize this one up nicely. Um, the child itself, as it's charted, um, is rather andro androgynous, which is a good thing because it allows you to personalize it. So that's one thing with crochet, or with crochet as well, but with cross stitch, um, I rarely feel bound by the colors that things are charted in. Um, if I don't love them. 
um, or, you know, I want to personalize them. It's easy, easy, easy to do, to do those color conversions. Never be afraid to change up the colors. Um, you know, if the person you're hooking this for or stitching this for has, you know, darker hair, stitch that darker hair color. All right, so that is the child. If you would like to uh, win this chart, if you'd like to be entered to win this chart, please in your comment just put in, I'd like to stitch the child. So the child, the pirate, and then mention the word gauge if you'd like the hook gauge. We're at the end. Um, so this is my 40th episode. I will be back early next week for episode number 41. And I just wanted to say to all of you who are returning viewers, thank you so much. It means the world to me that you keep coming back um, and that even though I took a break, you're right back there again with me. It is, it is heartwarming and I love you all. Um, for any new subscribers out there, welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you enjoy what you find here. Um, we don't have the biggest channel, but I think it's a really good channel. Um, I try and, and give content that I think people would enjoy, but that I enjoy as well. It's things that I feel passionate about because I think that translates. Um, if you are just stopping by, if you just stumbled upon this, please, please, if, if it's something that you've enjoyed, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I am oh so close to 500 subscribers. Um, I am planning a bigger giveaway for 500 subscribers. And one of my goals for this year, although, you know, I've never really looked at the number of subscribers I have as being, you know, the end all be all. Um, I, I think sometimes things can get really competitive. Um, in I've got this many subscribers and this person's got that many subscribers and it, it becomes all about subscribers and I never wanted it to be that. I wanted this to be genuine and I wanted it to be real and I don't want, you know, 5,000 subscribers and only 100 of them actually watch the videos. Um, I would rather have fewer subscribers and a higher percentage of people actually engaging with me. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. But that being said... I am trying right now to re-strategize my life and re-strategize how I am bringing in an income. And if I can start bringing in an income through monetization, um, even if it's just minimal, um, every little bit will, will help right now. So I, I am sort of looking at that, you know, hitting that thousand subscriber threshold so that I can switch on monetization and I will switch it on. Um, of course, you can always run ad blockers if you don't want to watch the ads. But yeah, every little bit of income source will help right now. I think one of the uh, the most important things to do if you are self-employed, which is where I'm trying to be, um, is diversify your income streams. Never put all your eggs in one basket, because if that basket handle breaks, you're done for. So I'm trying to get as many uh, channels of, of income happening um, that you know, can, can grow and develop. And you know what, along the way, some may fall, uh, others may come in, but yeah, here I am rambling again. I told you people asked about, you know, what my plans are for the business and I'm going to share it. If that's something you guys, you know, if that's too much information and you don't want to hear about that stuff, just let me know that as well. Um, but yeah, that's it for today. Please, uh, let your friends know um, about this channel. I would love to, to, to see them as well. Until next week, please take some time for yourself to enjoy the things that you love to do. Please take care of each other. We only have each other in this world. Um, it's important that we leave the competitiveness behind, in my opinion, and you know, raise each other up. You know, I get such a thrill out of seeing, you know, the people that I follow on YouTube achieving success. It really, really warms my heart. I am so pleased and proud of every single one of you that is out there doing these podcasts and, you know, doing the side hustles and, and, and making it work. Um, it, 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 it fills my heart with pride to see you doing well. And I hope that that happens the other way as well. But yeah, I think that's really important that we're, we're helping to raise each other up and support each other and celebrate each other's successes. 
All right, that's enough preaching for me. I will talk to you all next week. Have a great week, guys. Bye now.